and basketball analysis with over 70 years combined experience. This is the Bob Ryan and Jeff Goodman podcast. Bob Ryan, Gary Tangway pod here on CLNS Media brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media Network. Pick more, pick less with Prize Picks. Bob is coming to us from the friendly confines of Western Maine and good old Weld Lake. So we could tell that is not his <laughs> usual background of uh, his home library, if you will. All right, Bob, let's get to it. Uh, we're going to talk about the Washington Wizards and focus on them. Uh, what was the word you used? Are they the uh, poster child for mediocrity? Yes, but I've even figured it out. It's even worse than that. Uh, by, by saying they're mediocre, that gives mediocre the benefit of the doubt. Uh, <laughs> they are horrible. And, and it's been going on, and here's how badly it is. If you are, if you were born in 1994, so you're either 29 or 30, depending on your birth date as we speak. If you were born in, in 1994, here is the situation. You can, I can't imagine how you could be a, an NBA fan with the team that you've been stuck with as a rule. It, right. it is a relentless. And I got to back up before I get into it. In this, starting in 1968-69, the, the Bullets embarked on a decade of true excellence, true excellence. And they, let's see, I got my stuff here. Yeah. Um, they were uh, in a decade of the 70s, starting with 68, well, uh, they, and they, had, they won one title and got to the finals three times, other times, yeah. four times in the finals. So 68, 69 until um, 78, 79. Okay. They were good. This is the um, this is the, the team, and that was a fun team, the Baltimore Bullets oh, of, yeah. of uh, Wes Unsel, Elvin Hayes. Oh, no, that was later. But what, Wes Unsel, Jack Marin, because he was traded for Elvin Hayes, Jack Marin, Kevin Lockery, Earl Monroe, et cetera, et cetera. When Gus Kevin, Johnson. When did Kevin Grevy come into play? Uh, oh, that's later after uh, – uh, the, in a date in a decade because he was the Kentucky team of 78. Okay. So, uh, um, okay. Gus Johnson, the, the never forget what a, a head of his time player, six, six power forward. Gus Johnson was a, a leaping man, a tremendous guy. And he had the great battles, those great battles with Dave DeBusher. Okay. So if you, you go back and you're, if you're in your sixties or seventies, you finally remember the great bullets of the decade of the seventies culminating uh, uh, in winning the championship uh, uh, in 79, eight, okay, with Elvin Hayes, all right. But if you're 30 years old, here are some of the sad facts of your Bullets existence. Uh, you've been in the playoffs 10 times in 30 years, okay? 10 times, uh, during which time your record is 30 and 42. And this is after a period of time with your father and your uncle Ed and your grandfather, they were in the playoffs 12 straight years. Okay. <laughs> but it's worse than that. In the decade, in the, all the years since they last won it and, and, and went to the final in 79, they have had uh, no 50 win seasons whatsoever, only eight 40 win seasons in 40 years, and ready for this 20s or less 13 times including this year when they won 15 games. And they are relentless. And, and the, the thing about it that, that, that is, is so frustrating, and, and everybody who follows the league knows this, that if you're going to be bad, be bad. Be bad. Bad, bad, like they are this year. They still couldn't get the number one pick, but they did get right. the number two pick. Right. Alex Sarr. We'll see how good he is. But the Wizards, someone wrote this once upon a time. I don't know who could get a credit. The Wizards have been a mediocre team for half a human lifetime and have rarely even been bad enough to get a top pick. This is true. This is true. So right. this is where you're stuck. Ultimate, complete, relentless mediocrity. You, you, don't, you, you, you can't dig out the way uh, other teams in sports have done, including the Rockets who are digging out now. You know, and, and, and we know the teams have done this. Um, it's just so sad. So I applaud Anybody in that area who was a fan of the NBA, because you've been stuck. Now, there have been, there was a little moderate, moderate success uh, in the last decade, but it didn't last long. 
Well, I, I mean, didn't last long. Look, they had some problems. Remember Gilbert Arenas? Oh, yeah. Yes. You yes. Know, yes. He was a very good player, agent zero. But okay. then next thing you know, he's got guns in the locker room. You're right. Exactly. There's always something. It's always something. You're right. And then, There's always something. So I, I, you know, I really applaud anybody who's a fan of that franchise. Uh, I, but it's been kind of a, you know, this, you realize that this team is in its sixth different identity since, in a sense, since it came into the league in 1961. That I did not know. This, this team was hatched as an expansion team. And if I'm not mistaken, I should have looked it up better. Uh, this was the first expansion when the league went from eight teams to nine. Okay. But um, they were the Chicago Packers. Really? After one year, yes. I don't know whether there was pressure from a certain city in Wisconsin or what, but they changed their nickname after one year to the Chicago Zephyrs. That I remember. And then they moved to Baltimore, where they were hatched as the Bullets. And they were, in one year, I don't know if you remember this guy, in 73, 74, they were the Capitol Bullets. Yes, I do remember that, because they moved to Landover, Maryland. Right? Correct. That's exactly right. Exactly right. And then, yeah, when they went from uh, Baltimore, the Civic Arena, which I remember, uh, and then they became the Washington Bullets finally when they, right. and, and now they were pressured by society to change that nickname. Correct. And, uh, and, they, became, and they became the Wizards. Okay. Um, so that is, that's the sad tale. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app. They've got over 5 million active members. Look, it is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Now, unlike all the other apps, Prize Picks, it's just you against the numbers. That's it. Now, you can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. And one Caleb Williams passing yard gets you one win on Prize Picks every week in September. That's right. Only one yard gets you an automatic win every football weekend in September. Four weeks of free W's. Don't miss this deal on prize picks because it's gone when September ends. Now, here's an example of a player projection lineup. You could be going Tyreek Hill for more than 90 receiving yards or Dak Prescott for more than 263 passing yards. On the other end, Josh Allen for less than 240 passing yards and CeeDee Lamb for more than 96 receiving yards. You like those picks? So download the Price Picks app today and use code CLNS and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five bucks. That's code CLNS on Price Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus. It's guaranteed. Price Picks, run your game. So let's look at their roster. What, 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 the, what do you think their chances are of any kind of significant significant improvement? Uh, the core of the roster, you ready? Uh, Jordan Poole, Kyle Kuzma, Jonas Valencianis. You know who they did? Did you know they picked up Malcolm Bragdon? <laughs> I did not know. Well, that. that's where he is. That's where he is. Corey Kispert, Sadiq Bey, who I, I kind of like, Marvin Bagley III, who's been a flop in his time. And they had the number one, number two pick this year in the draft, Alex Saar of, uh, of France. Uh, and a new coach who I know nothing about other than the fact he's got a, 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 a OKC pedigree, uh, and that is Brian Keefe. So we'll see what he can do. But among the people who mismanaged that franchise over the years was some guy named Michael Jordan, if you recall. I do. Yes, that did not help them. No, it didn't help. And as someone pointed out, he didn't help him by playing either, by taking up a spot uh, when he was. He, well, I he mean, did that, average 20. Go ahead. He did average 20 points a game on the way out, which only the only other person I know did that was uh, other was was someone else we're going to talk about today in the Jerry West. But uh, um, anyway, but he mismanaged the franchise as he's mismanaged the Hornets. He's driven them into the ground, and you know uh, this, his his expertise does not extend beyond his playing. That's for sure. So anyway, that's the sad tale of the. Now I'm, I don't say this. It, I, I feel badly for the fans. You know, no fan, no set of fandom deserves this. You know, they're going to, it's just the people who have been relentlessly loyal. But uh, that's the story. They are, they're not even good enough to, bad enough to be mediocre. They're, 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 right. they're, they're awful. They're not, yeah, they're, they're, not even they're, good they're, enough. they're not bad enough. They're not good enough and they're not bad enough. But that could change. You mentioned the Jordan thing, though. 
didn't he play because ownership wanted him to play or the other owners sure. begged him to play? Yeah, they wanted that. Like the Michael, and then like Michael was a drive. Every, everywhere they went, the, the building was still sold out on the road. No right. question, you know, right. no question. I remember Doug Collins was coaching, and uh, he was very uh, defensive about Michael's uh, play. You right. know, and uh, uh, yeah, he, he was not he was not happy uh, that when so, certain kind of questions he did not like. I remember, and I and I he's a good guy. I liked him very much, but boy, that that was tough. That was tough for him when he had when he had to deal with the 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 Michael Jordan situation and pretend that he liked it. He couldn't have liked it, right? Because it wasn't there. <laughs> it was there for for commerce purposes, but also they never tanked all the way. I mentioned Gilbert Arenas, then they had Bradley Beal, and they and then of course they had Jordan. But they always had one player that yeah. could be considered a franchise player. Now I don't know if Beal's a franchise player. But he's a well, very good player. Level player. You know, I, 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 I'm very judicious with the use of that word franchise in any sport. Right. But um, Beal was an all-star level player. They had some all-star level players. Right. But but not as, enough of them at the same time. That's for sure. Right. But so, when you have an all-star player, that keeps you out of the lottery. But I, I just, you know, yeah. So I, they I have just to wanna... tank. They got a tank, Bob. It's Tankapalooza in D.C. That's what you got to do. You did it, and they got to do it. I'm going to repeat one more time. If you were, so people, maybe somebody just tuned in. If you were born in 1994 and you and, and that's your team, they have won in the 20s or less, they've done that twice, 13 times in your lifetime. They have, they have won fewer than 30 games. Right. You deserve whoever you are. <laughs> well, I think the whole region deserves better. I know that they've yeah. had Stanley Cup success, uh, but the Redskins have been ter- uh, commanders. Excuse me, commanders. They changed yeah. the name. Well, the Redskins leading to the commanders. Yeah, I mean, they were once the epitome of excellence, as we know. Oh, you know, you and I remember. Yeah, that. I mean, State. yeah, you know, George Allen and all that, and the futures now, and and you know, every in many years, but, but uh, of course now that they've been they've been woeful for. Again, you're right. They just they deserve better. Uh, they, yeah, I mean, Baltimore that's... had a Weaver in that group. Um, the the Wizards were always. I mean, as you mentioned, the Wizards when they were the Bullets with Elvin Hayes and Wes Unsell. I mean, they went to the finals once. Uh, went went to the finals twice, right? Like seventy five and seventy nine, and they lost, and they won in seventy nine. The Orioles were always 70... in it. Orioles were always in it. The Redskins are. Oh, they... Orioles had some great in it. You know, it, they're back. It, that area is getting yeah. killed. Yep. Well, they did sneak the the, the uh, national snack snuck one in a few years ago, but that's right. That's memory speaking quickly too. By the way, because we're letting Juan Soto go, you know, was their equivalent of Mookie, you know, us right. letting Mookie go. Right. So there you go. Um, All right, Bob. What, what feelings do you have on expansion or the discussion of? I think that. Uh, I understand that there's a couple of markets that would like a team, uh, presumably uh, Seattle, which got screwed, one of the two worst screwings in NBA history, the other being Buffalo. Right. And uh, um, who else are they talking about? Louisville, maybe, because they were pillars of the ABA. Didn't yeah, get I, to come I, in. Guess, I can't see Louisville doing that. I, that they don't but, have uh, I, I, I just, we got enough teams. The scheduling is a mess uh, always. They never, they can never decide how they want to schedule, you know, and you want a balanced schedule, you want an unbalanced schedule, you want, you know, I don't know. And I, that's enough. I, I, I can't imagine that the, and, and there's the talent worthy of it, I guess, but not really. Is I mean, it? I mean, the only way you could justify the talent is because of the European invasion. Thank you. I just, you snatched the words out of my mouth. You grabbed them out of my mouth. You whistled them out of my mouth. I was going to say that, Gary. Great minds, in, as they say. Thank yes. You. Thank God. For Europe, it's just like in baseball. Can you imagine baseball without people whose first language is Spanish? Oh my God! The major leagues are the unrecognizable. Yeah. Well, that's that's another topic for another day. But yeah. uh, uh, anyway, yes, Europe. Thank God for Europe. And and no, we're on a run now. Was it five years in a row now? The MVP is you know now it's the same three people, but uh, is and uh, the best players in the league now are, are uh, arguably European, which well, speaks I mean, well to the. The problem is with the league is kids, kids, 
you know, the Jason Tatum's of the world are coming in at 19, <laughs> you know? Yes. I, I, and I just don't think that it's fair, unless you're LeBron James, to expect a lot of a 19-year-old to come when they Why come in the league. Think, depending on how it, it works on the other end with legislation, et cetera, uh, due to the NIL vast transformation of the nature right. of college sports in America, there's now much more incentive for someone to stay in in certain right. circumstances than to come out. You're going Which to get paid. Yeah. You, you're going to, you, it, it will help your development if you've got a good, you know, the right coach. Not all the coaches are equal, God knows, but there are some wonderful coaches in college who can help people develop into professional players. Yeah, but we don't know how that's all going to shake out either because that, if there's anything in its training, you know, in, in, in its formative stage, and, and as we, we're playing trial and error, how this is going to work out, it's the NIL thing. Believe me, com, uh, combined with the transfer portal. But the NIL, you know, we got a huge lawsuit. Uh, I don't know how many there are. People, you know, going after them now to get back pay that they they thought they were just deprived of. We'll see how the money holds up and how it's going to work and everything. We have no idea. But this has had a direct effect on, it could have a direct effect and, and on, on how many kids come out when. And we, we might get, a, at least instead of 19-year-olds, we might start getting some 21-year-olds <laughs> at least. So we'll see. Which is a good thing. Um, yes. You know, I've had the chance to see the Patriots win the big game five times. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like being there live, right? And Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite team play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. When you go to the Game Time app, look for the super deal. But you got to go to the app. you got to look for it. Check out the super deal. You won't regret it. With the Game Time app, curated deals make it easier to find the best price on great seats. Don't forget, look for the super deal. See views before you buy. You check out the view before you buy it. How's better? That's nothing better than that. It's like test driving the ticket. Curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout. And as I mentioned, you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy it. Take the guesswork out of buying concert tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price. Guaranteed. All right, let's. You mentioned Jerry West. The Lakers are going to have number forty-four on their uniform this year, and we know that you are a fan of Mr. West and his legacy. I am. He was a class act on and off the court. Uh, the one guy that Johnny most couldn't say a bad word about, gentlemen Jerry, and instead of you know, instead of he crawled out of a sore, his teammate Kurt Rambis. Uh, Jerry West was class personified, absolutely. Wonderful player, along with Oscar Robertson, they just dominated in that in the sixties. They were the, they were the big all star backcourt every single year, literally. And uh, West was you can't say enough good things about Jerry West. And and then uh, no one has had a more star spangled career, moving from playing ranks to the executive ranks. His coaching meant so meant, uh, but there may have been mitigating circumstances. Okay, his coaching uh, doesn't, uh, but um, his his. Um, executive decisions were wonderful and his, you know and first, not to mention he's uh you know hired pat riley uh he 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 he, he was just mr basketball he, he, well, he yeah, the was logo mr. Basketball. the logo bob the logo. He was, the logo he's the logo thank you i knew i knew i was going to spit it out um can't say enough good things about about jerry west and, and by the way uh they're honoring jerry west after <laughs> as in, in part i think as out of the embarrassment caused by genie bus who named her top five Lakers of all time and didn't name Jerry West. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you knew he that. Named, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Right in that spring. That she she came up with a list of the top five Lakers, and, and it didn't include Jerry West. So uh, they, they, they're they shamed, almost shamed into this now. <laughs> but it's nice. It's really good. And every everybody who wears that uniform should be proud to have Jerry West's uh, number on it. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking they're probably, she's probably went Kobe, Shaq, LeBron, Wilt, and Elgin. No disrespect to Elgin. No, she, no, she, included, no uh, she included Phil Jackson as opposed to a player. 
Oh, forget that. As a, as that's a, ridiculous. As a, yeah. Well, yeah. she dated him for God's sake, so right. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, they, you know. Yeah. So right. um, that got some. I did get attention out there. I can tell you that. So no, uh, sure. Anyway. Oh, this is a nice thing. Well, I'm glad you brought up the front office capability. The roster that he had, I remember as coach. I mean, it just wasn't the type of roster that he developed later on. Uh, but the fact that he thought Pat Riley would make a good coach goes underrated, undertold, because Pat Riley was a guy who had a I mean, he was at the end of the bench, right? NBA career. He was just, he was a bench guy, really. Um, well, and, then, and then he was a broadcaster. They put him, he was looking for something to do. They put him in the booth with Chick. And Jerry, I, I don't know what he saw in him, but he thought he was the right guy. I mean, without Jerry West, the Pat Riley, the hair slicked back, the suits, the Knicks, the Miami Heat, doesn't happen. No, you're right. It doesn't happen. And, and you're actually right. Well, the Lakers in that period of time, were an ideal functioning sports organization. The owner owned, the GM GM'd, and the coach coached. And the players played, and they didn't get confusion on any of the roles. Right. Any, anywhere along the way. Uh, uh, Jerry Buss, Dr. Jerry Buss, let Jerry do his job, and Jerry let Pat do his job. Now, in the end, there was friction between the two, apparently. No, there okay? Eventually, there was. But for a period of time, when they were so successful winning five times, that that's why that's how they worked. They worked so well in that regard. By the way, I must tell you an anecdote. I'm, I'm sorry about about Pat Riley. So it's 1976, and it's the NBA Finals, Celtics and the Suns. And uh, this, as I have told before, uh, I was having a little bit of a dispute, if you will, with Tommy Heinsohn, and I decided I would stay at Paul Westfall's house when I went to Phoenix, rather than a hotel or or, uh, or travel with them or anything else. And uh, Paul had a pool, and it being uh, uh, the uh, three-hour difference, and it, it is three hours because they don't go daylight in Phoenix, even though it's two hours now. They, uh, they, uh, 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 we're back at the pool at two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm done writing because I had a deadline, at, which was five o'clock. So I'm all right, done. Right. And I'm we're at the pool. Alvin Adams lived down the street, and someone else would come over. And another guy would come over. He was the 13th man on the roster that year. He was the guy left off of, for the playoffs, Pat Riley. Right. <laughs> so he was the, the afterthought on that 76. Now, the 71-72 Lakers, great team, great team, one of the great handball great teams in NBA history, the 33 straight win team that won the championship. He was a key, he was a he was Peyton Pritchard on that team. Got it. Not this not the same game. He had a, a significant substitute role. He and John Q. Trapp, okay? So they, they were so he, but at no point in his career was he more than that. As a, he's, but you know, he's revered in Kentucky as and oh, right, right, so, right, as right, right. college player. It was 6'3 jump center and, and and played way over his size and was tough competitor and all that. You know, it's a wonderful college player. But uh, anyway, that's but he was the 13th man on the 12 man Phoenix Suns roster in 76, hanging out at Jerry at uh, Paul Westfall's pool. Did you have any idea he would be a good coach? No, no, I didn't know him that well at the time. You know, we got, no, I mean, I knew he was, uh, I thought I would say he was bright, but the level that he showed, you can't project any, if anybody can identify people like that, they, they, what, what, what a hiring firm addition you'd be. Well, yeah. I don't yeah. think anybody could dream, I don't think anybody could dream that, uh, but boy, he was ready, you know, slogans, <laughs> you know, and, and great. Great descriptions and oh, just a, a well, and he obviously had great players. See, this is where West, oh. this is where West gets the needs to get the credit. I mean, I don't know. Did Jerry trade for Jabbar? Um, that was no. Oh no, um, I'm trying to think who the GM was, but Kareem forced his way, basically pouted his way out of Milwaukee. He wanted out of Milwaukee, much, so Kareem and, went to L.A. But yeah. Jerry drafted Magic, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, yeah. Oh yeah. No, he he. Oh, worthy. The big one is worthy because there were three guys that were in the same category in people's minds in that draft that year: Terry Cummings and Dominique Wilkins. Now, uh, Dominique Wilkins was certainly a tough guy to pass over, you know. But but 
he took worthy when he had an option. Right. Had that. Better, yeah. You know, so we don't know how Wilkins would have worked out with them, but I think worthy turned out to be a much safer pick for them. Yeah. He was the perfect guy for that team. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that, that's the big one of all that he gets credit for. I think uh, also he signed McAdoo when McAdoo was, was now right. done. And, and he gave, you know, and he gave him extended life. And that was an important part of those teams, too. Well, there you have it. Bob Ryan from the shores of Weld Lake. Uh, from Web Lake. Web Lake in Weld Maine. Web Lake. Web Lake. Yes. Web Lake. Ah. Uh, anyways, uh, brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media Network. Pick more, pick less with Prize Picks. All right, Bob, talk to you soon. Okay, Gary. Mm-hmm.